Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. f of x equals y times f of xy. We are given that f of 40 is equal to 30 and we're supposed to find f of 50. So, there's definitely uh, different approaches to this problem. I'm going to be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first method. With functional equations, Sometimes it's just trial and error. You just try certain things. You're not, there's no guarantee that it's going to work. Uh, but testing some special values such as x equals 0, y equals 0, y equals x, x equals 1, y equals 1, y equals 1 over x, so on and so forth. Those special values will be helpful most of the time. Or sometimes you look at the domain of the function or sometimes you check you know, um, certain uh, special values and then sometimes you will just check for injectivity, surjectivity and so on and so forth. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into it. My first method, for my first method, I'm just going to set y equals 1. So this is not going to be something that I, uh, you know, will definitely uh, be it's not something that will be definitely helpful, but I'm just testing it, okay? So if I replace y with 1 on both sides, left-hand side doesn't contain any y, so it's just going to stay as is. f of x is going to be y, which is 1, times f of xy, which is x in this case. This gave me f of x equals f of x, which is always true, but it doesn't help me, right? It's nice, but it's not helpful. Okay, cool. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Sometimes it's good to see that things that don't work or that don't help because it's not always like uh, you know hit and score it's sometimes hit and miss anyways x equals 1 gives us let's see what happens if x equals 1 then I get f of 1 equals y times this time y is not being replaced so it's going to be y times f of 1 times y which is f of y so this is definitely much better than the first one because it gave us f of y and a y and an f of 1. This is really nice because f of 1 is a constant. So I can go ahead and set it equal to c. Okay, hopefully you do see what I see. So set it equal to c now. And from here, you can isolate f of y, which is super duper nice. You're not always this lucky. We were able to get actually an expression for f of y, which means we can turn it into f of x as well. Now, one thing that I want to mention here, which is not always something we do, but it's always good to check. We can substitute this into the original problem to see that it actually works. So my original equation was f of x equals y f of xy. Now, f of y equals c over y basically means f of x equals c over x and f of xy equals c over xy. So we can basically, once we get an expression for the function, we can replace the variable with whatever uh, other variable we have. It doesn't matter, they're just dummy variables. I don't know why they're called dummy. It's kind of like stupid variables, but it's, they're just dummies. So let's go ahead and plug it in. f of x should be c over x. Does that equal the right hand side? y is y, f of xy is c over xy. Here, y cancels out and we get c over x equals c over x, which is true as long as x does not equal 0. Of course, for x equals 0, we have a problem. And forget about x equals 0 because that should be excluded from the domain. I didn't talk about it, but hopefully you figured it out by now. Anyway, so our finding works, which is cool. So now we have f of y equals c over y, which is nice, but do you want to turn it into an x? Well, some people like x, so let's go ahead and do that. R wrote f of x as c over x. This is cool because now I can find what I need. Remember, the problem gave you f of 40 as 30, and it was asking for f of 50. All right, great. So now, since I have an expression for f of x, I'm going to replace x with 40 first, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Replace x with 40. You get c over 40. We know that it's equal to 30. From here, cross multiplication gives us c equals 1,200, or some people call this 1,200. How about f of 50? Well, f of 50 is equal to c over 50, right? But c is 
1,200. And the answer is going to be 24. So f of 50 is 24. And this brings us to the end of the first method, not to the end of the video yet. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And within the second method, I'm actually going to show you two approaches. So it's kind of like 2a and 2b. Allow me to do that, 2b or not 2b. So what are we going to do with the second method? Let me rewrite my equation. f of x equals y f of x, y. And then f of 40 is given as 30. I'm supposed to find f of 50. I can't remember where I've seen this problem, probably on the, on the web. Uh, but I think I made up the numbers. If uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so for my second method, A, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to replace x with 40 in this equation and y with 5 fourths. And you might be questioning why, right? I mean, seriously, like, no pun intended. Like, why am I doing this? Because 40 times 5 fourths is equal to 50. Isn't that awesome? And I do need f of 50. Cool. It's going to work because we have an xy here. You see? So let's go ahead and replace that. f of 40 equals y, which is 5 fourths, multiplied by f of xy, which is 40 times 5 fourths. This is why I'm using 5 fourths for y. And this gives us the answer. f of 40 is 30. This is 5 fourths. And f of 50 is what I'm trying to find. So I can find it from here by using the reciprocal or whatever, 120, you can do cross multiplication. Whatever you do, you'll get the answer. And it's going to be 24, as before. Let's go ahead and talk about 2b. All right, to be or not to be. So now, one more time, I'm going to write the equation. f of x equals y times f of xy. f of 40 is 30. And f of 50 is unknown. And we're going to find it and pretend that we don't already know the answer. Maybe you haven't seen the first method or 2a. And you're just going to be like, okay, I'm doing it. So anyways, this is the second option for method 2 or 2b. Remember, with the first method, I replace y with 5 fourths. This time, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to replace x with 50, but y with 4 fifths instead of 5 fourths. Why? You'll see in a little bit. Now, if you replace x with 50, you get f of 50. And on the right-hand side, if you replace y with 4 fifths, you're going to get 4 fifths multiplied by f of 50 times 4 fifths because x is 50. And remember, the first one, which is 2a, used x equals 40. So it used different x and y values, if you pay attention to that. And this is going to give us the answer more directly because we're looking for f of 50 and f of 40. This is going to be 40, right? f of 40 is known to be 30. So this is going to be 24. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.